So Modern Warfare 3 Season 1 kicks off on Wednesday, and today I've got a bit of early access multiplayer content to share. I want to start out with my thoughts, some general overview of the content here that you can expect to see within Season 1 of Modern Warfare 3, and then later in the afternoon or evening for our regularly scheduled content, I wanted to bring you our standard like weapons of the upcoming season video that we normally do, but this time with actual footage early, which is nice instead of just like screenshots of them all. But today I want to run down some general looks at Season 1, and not only just the content, but the information at hand in regards to gameplay changes and all. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below on what you think of the new content showcased, subscribe if you're new, and perhaps support that 60% of viewers not subscribed, and stick around for more Season 1 content as well as Warzone as we gear up for that launch as well. So first, a disclaimer, or rather full understanding of all of this, I was at Sledgehammer earlier last week and we had about like two hours or so to play the game, so really first impression stuff. Not a master of any of this stuff just yet, didn't pull out like any MGB gameplay or anything like that, playing against some of the best players in the world. I'm sure that some of my thinking on things will change over the course of grinding stuff out, but for context, there really wasn't a whole ton beyond that in terms of playtime. Only other thing I think I'll mention, we were recording footage off a singular dev PC through OBS and the output was 1080p. I don't work with OBS much, I use shadow play to capture footage, so watching back my footage before compiling this all, I will say apologies it's not nearly as crystal clear as other gameplay videos here on the channel, but not really using OBS to capture stuff and then jumping right into it, didn't really have time to fine tune any of the quality settings here, so you may notice that detail as well. But anyways, let's just jump into it here, let's talk firstly about maps. The one I want to talk about first is meat. First things first, the devs know exactly what we're saying about meat. That meme is going on in the studio as well, so I'd imagine we're about to have quite a few 24-7 playlists to grind out this map in the future. But this, this I think is Sledgehammer's shipment. Yes, we have shipment in Modern Warfare 3 as a carry forward map from Modern Warfare 2, but like, this is their shipment. We had DOS House and Vanguard, shipment again in World War II. Honestly, I don't think there was any map that was that small in Advanced Warfare, so this is like their first original stupidly small map. But unlike Shipment, it's got a lot of corridors, hallways, some cover to dip in and out of, but it's very tight and close quarters here. I run up mid for most games that I've played, just because I'm a dot chasing nerd who wants those gunfights immediately. And let me tell you, I was in for a surprise not realizing how small and quickly you got to that mid map. My first life on our first match, I got destroyed here at that rushing up mid. Spawns naturally are going to be unreal, it's again, basically sledgehammer shipment, so you're going to be spawning with and around people, especially if players push spawn and cause any sort of flip or push out. All in all, I did really enjoy this map again, but again, I'm a psycho who enjoys that chaos of all that stuff. I think this would have been a phenomenal map for weapon ranking and camo grinding, so maybe you're not done with either of those, but the kill potential and challenge potential is through the roof by comparison to a lot of the other maps we see on offer. So if you haven't ranked up anything or you're doing camo challenges, now you have shipment and a new super chaotic map to work with. Next, Greece. I'm up in the air on if I like this one or not, admittedly. Like initial reaction is by default, yes, I do, because it's a new map and playing 16 remakes wears you down. So it's refreshing to see something new but the map is a massive cluster, and you get that picture. If you looked at the initial TAC map that was released ahead of schedule, ahead of gameplay showcases, and when it's released as of later this week, you'd see that there's absolutely a ton of close quarters just clutter in that TAC map. Lots of flank and jump routes, and in actuality, because you can mantle walls and such, it's even more. So to that point, it's like you're always five feet or something from a wall, almost it feels like. Now, I think that if you were to play like a mercenary playlist, if we had that where you're playing all solos, you'll be fine, but the moment a five to six man squad gets a hold of spawns and anchor points, it's a spawn trap you're probably not gonna break out of. I also feel like the flow was just a bit off because there were so many tight and open areas, but they just randomly open up into pockets like massively open space. So it felt odd in that regard. Like you feel like you're in a maze at one point and then just random areas of like mid map and slightly off of mid map, then there's just like large open areas where it opens up to. So it was a weird initial feel to it. Again, I only played I want to say one or two matches on it, so this is, again, very early impression, and it could be something that changes here once it releases later this week, but again, I think this one is probably going to be one of those things where I'll have my suspicions or, like, thoughts validated or changed in the next few days when I can jump into it more, but that was the initial thoughts on it. To be fair, it is going to be great for challenges and such and regular gameplay for SMGs and shotguns, especially with the SMG buffs here coming. Now, Rio is the next map we'll talk about in the final 6v6 map we have on offer. This actually isn't going to be one you'll see at launch, so it comes mid-2024 with the mid-season update, but this one feels similar in size to Greece, but the layout is entirely different. Honestly, the thing that I first felt like I was playing, not necessarily for the rest of the map, but at least the main hard point that I went and attacked first, because it's the first hill, is the Pines from Black Ops Cold War. That first hard point hill is in the center of the map with the mall and escalators on each end, so it just reminded me of that, but the rest of the map, in terms of 
like theme seemed to remind me a bit of Mercado. So it's a strange little combination map, but this one I thought played pretty well, at least from the hard point match that we played. It's very much a matter of you can watch the flow of the map. It's predictable in spawns where players will be. And for that reason, I think it'll be something that has potential in standard 6v6 gameplay as well. So had a good time with that one. Really enjoyed it. It was something that does have a bit of everything for everybody. You can play SMG or rifle play, but there are long enough lines of sight. That you can jump in with a sniper and get some kills done with that as well. Now, the only other multiplayer map we ended up seeing was Training Facility, which is in 2v2. That's Gunfight. And if I can be brutally honest with you, I'm not one for Gunfight. I don't play it too much anymore. But good God, I got smacked around in the two matches we played. And for that reason, that reason alone, I didn't like it. But that's, again, absolutely not a fair assessment of the map. That's not something that is indicative of the map itself. Had I done better, had I been playing against people that were not literally top players in the world, I'm sure I would have enjoyed it more. But the industrial warehouse aesthetic made for a solid tense feeling in the atmosphere and environment. There's some cool jump spots, a cutout for a crouch walkway that's good for flanking. And to the best of my knowledge, it was entirely symmetrical, so it shouldn't have any real favored sides, which obviously is nice and what you want in gunfight. Now, beyond that, that's the original content we'll see, but also can I like throw in that we have like an asterisk of more original maps coming because we have almost entirely reskinned and changed thematically maps. This stuff, I don't think that I can put in video just yet. That was embargoed for later on for some reason, but we have things like a holiday themed high rise map. Those vortex maps of Satan's Quarry, Tetanus and Spore Yard honestly are insanely cool in terms of theme. I think that we might actually have a problem with visibility in Satan's Quarry. Any map that's darker in theme is going to blend right into every single shadow in Satan's Quarry. Spore Yard is honestly like one of the coolest maps, I think, in terms of Skybox we've had. That is like the dark ether and what we saw with Black Ops Cold War. But in Scrapyard, you have the spores all throughout the Skybox that it just makes for a really dark and like bioluminescent feel. I think that was a really fun one to play on. Tetanus, I actually didn't get any chance to play on, so I didn't get any real hands-on understanding of what that will look like in practice. But again, we have like four to five different map variations that while they are the same base maps, they feel incredibly different because of that atmosphere, which is cool. So that's something to add to the list as well. Weaponry, jumping on into the other stuff here. Again, stay tuned for tonight for the second video going up. We're going to be seeing a healthy number of weapons, five total throughout the season. But brief rundown here before we jump into them in depth later on down the line. The Ram 7 was kind of fun to play with. A lot of bounce and kick on the base. Also, the Black Cell Blueprint kind of sucks in that pre-built loadout. So if you end up getting that, make sure you end up ranking it up and changing those attachments out. The XRK Stalker, a lot of fun but really slow by default, powerful as ever too. Didn't see the stat line for them, but wouldn't be surprised if this is now a sniper used in Warzone as well, having the ability to one hit down. The Stormender, this is an EMP launcher essentially, so not for kills, but for equipment. And then unfortunately, the other weapons, the HRM9 and the TAC of Alvary, those were both behind armory unlocks. And in the build we had, we just didn't have time to get those and they won't be there at launch or it seems that way anyway. So that's something that I didn't get any hands on with or any sort of impressions to give you any idea of what to expect with that. Now, beyond that, we also will see general gameplay changes and this is like very high level stuff in regards to what we were told about about patch notes coming so there's gonna be more to talk about for sure but we're gonna have general weapon tuning the general gist of that was smgs up rifles down a bit in our limited play time it did seem viable but some of the targets they said were bursts and that's understandable so that's something to consider riot shields are getting a nerf for the turtle effects where you have them on your back with overkill but they buffed them to be two hit kill instead of three hit kill so they're still I wouldn't say viable. I don't really ever consider the Riot Shield super viable for like 99% of gameplay engagements, but it's that trade-off that if you want to use the Riot Shield for the actual Riot Shield, it's a little better, whereas if you're using it just for protection effects, it's a little worse. So an up and down there as well. Spawn tuning is something that there's going to be a little bit, but they said the big targeted changes are coming with Season 1 Reloaded. There's supposed to be a health and stamina bar, though that I don't know if that was in our build or not. I didn't think of it in the moment when we were playing, but watching back the footage, it wasn't included in the HUD like it was mentioned to be. So we'll see if that is something that actually comes to fruition or if that's something that's like added a couple of days after. Vehicle adjustments, didn't see it in action, but hopefully the sedan and stuff doesn't suck. That's something they said they were targeting on fixing. And then optic tuning was something in the Q&A portion that came up that could potentially be something in the future that they said that they were looking to get that implemented for the game at launch, but it just didn't happen. It was one of those things that they just didn't have time to finish it out by scrapping tuning for the rest of the weapon but being able to adjust your optics to a near or far eye position. I do think that of all the tuning effects, that's probably the one that I liked the most and it wasn't the most arbitrary stuff really. Like, yeah, tuning changed some things, but you didn't notice a lot of the 
tuning. The close and far eye positions, you absolutely did, though. So that was something that I'd like to see come back. We'll see if that actually does. All in all, though, I'm at least for the immediate future, happy with what we saw here. It's nice to see we're getting original content, especially after a launch of 16 remastered or rather remade maps. It kind of seems like we're just like backwards in the approach now at this point where just to get this game ready to ship and ready to launch, the remasters of course came as that priority because they were already had a base. They didn't take as much time to design. And so therefore now you have on the back end all these original maps. So yeah, it is weird that it's a sort of DLC, if you want to call it that, which again, I think is totally valid. It's whatever. I'm personally having more fun with this launch of this air quote DLC than I did Modern Warfare 2 as the base. That's a different story for a different day, but it is something that we're going to start to see a lot more original stuff rolling in as well. And based off the frequency of what we've seen with updates so far, the frequency at which Sledgehammer's attempted to keep granting players things to do with camo rewards and such, I'm intrigued to see what this future beyond this stuff holds and where we go from here. Again, thoughts and opinions absolutely can change, and if that's the case, I'll happily share it with you guys. I'm not going to really hold back on anything. Don't care to, but it is something that it's nice to see, like, a proper decent amount of content initially, because if you look at it, I mean, there were some high points in Modern Warfare 2. Season 3 ended up coming with nine maps here with this, but that was with four up front for gunfight, so that was with a launch, but that was a decently large season in terms of maps. That only gave you three weapons, though. The best balanced season, I'd say, in terms of comparable content for Modern Warfare 2, was season five. You had five maps, two originals, one remake, and two gunfights, and five weapons introduced. But before that, you kind of have to go all the way back to like Cold War season five was the last solid MP focused season with five maps across 6v6 and face off and a handful of other weapons thrown in the mix there. So anyways, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at here at this. That is my initial impressions and general overview of what you can expect with the maps, weapons, and all that kind of stuff coming within season one and what I got hands on gameplay with. But that's that. That's your first look at season one one gameplay here from multiplayer come back later tonight we'll of course have more discussions regarding modern warfare 3 season 1 weaponry a lot more in detail and showcasing all that kind of stuff so of course love to have you come around for that but that said let me know your thoughts down below what do you think if you enjoyed the video you found it out on insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel again sticking around for season one content in regards to weaponry and everything beyond that hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing for now that's what we're gonna call it thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you later take care and peace